look something like this in aggregate. And you'll find all this data available to anyone on TeaPartyNationalism.com. And we have more detailed data for anyone who's interested. It shows you kind of a disbursement of the, of the, the pattern around the country. These six national factions and their members have roughly 3,000 affiliated local chapters. You can see their locations here. Again, this is something better to look at the website at the website because you can drill in and see exactly what's going on in your state or in your local community. Now, look at a graph. A look at the graph counting Tea Party numbers over time shows that the organizations are continuing to grow. The different national factions are all not growing at the same rate. However, the Tea Party Patriots and Resistant Net, the two largest lines there are the two factions with the most diff diffuse locally based organizational structures and they're experiencing the fastest rates of growth. This would tend to indicate that the larger uh, th that a larger movement is less susceptible to central control and more likely to attract racist and nativist elements at the local level. Simply put, as the data shows us, the Tea Parties are not going away after the midterm elections and they cannot expect it and we can expect, however, to have a continuing impact on, public po on the public policy debate into the future. It should not be expected, however, that the Tea Party movement will have the same organizational configurations for the indefinite future. <coughs> At a minimum, some sorting out process is likely to occur, particularly after these midterm elections. Now, it would be a mistake of the highest order to claim that all Tea Partiers are nativist vigilantes or racists of one stripe or another. And this paper manifestly does not make that claim. Nevertheless, the impact of President Barack Obama's election and the fact that the first family of the United States have ancestors who were once directly property of white people has, in fact, had an effect. It is not a direct and mechanical effect, like hitting a cue ball to a nine ball into the corner pocket, but it is identifiable nonetheless. Consider, for example, the incessant depiction of Barack Obama as a non-American. This theme began almost, began among those who regard him as a non-native born American who should not rightly, or constitutionally they argue, hold the presidency. The permutations go on from there. Islamic terrorist, socialist, African witch doctor, lying African, etc. If he were not properly American, then he, would, he becomes the other. That is not us. In fact, five of the six of the national factions we're talking about here today have these so-called birthers in their leadership, the one exception being FreedomWorks. As already discussed today, the both polling data and observable evidence point to the fact that the Tea Party attendees and their supporters are overwhelmingly white. Significantly, these white Tea Partiers show noticeably different attitudes than those of white people generally, particularly in regards to racially charged issues. These numbers indicate racially and cultural differences that morph directly into opposing beliefs about immigration, national identity, and the question that haunts this Tea Party movement. Who is an American? The Revolutionary War era costumes, the yellow don't tread on me Gadsden flags from the same era, the overstated veneration of the Constitution, and the defense of American exceptionalism in a world that has turned to transnational economies and global institutions are all signs of an overarching nationalism that helps define the Tea Party movement. It is a form of American nationalism, however, that does not include all Americans, and it separates itself from those it regards as insufficiently, quote unquote, real Americans. Consider in this regard a recent Tea Party Nation newsletter article entitled, Real Americans Did Not Sue Arizona, or the handwritten sign from a Tea Party rally, obviously written in earnest, that says, I am an er arrogant American. Unlike our president, I am proud of my country, our freedom, our generosity, no apology from me. It is a notion that President Barack Obama is not a real natural born American, that he is some other kind of person that abounds in Tea Party ranks and draws the movement into this pit of no return. Indeed, these claims have become so widespread that they have corresponded to an uptick in the number of Americans who believe that President Obama is not a Christian as he professes, but in fact a Muslim. Shortly before he took office in March 2009, 11% of Americans believed he was Muslim. In August of 2010, the Pew Research Center measured that number at 
While social scientists have not yet to, to pinpoint this jump in numbers uh, as caused by the Tea Party years propaganda, it was during this period of intense Tea Party uh, opposition to Obama and his supposedly Muslim roots. Which brings us to the issue of Islamophobia in the Tea Party. Alongside racism, anti-Semitism, the elements of Islamophobia have found their way into the Tea Party movement. Tea Party leaders and members have employed anti-Muslim language, and, was, and they continue to push Islamophobia as a new cutting-edge wedge issue. It is not my contention that all Tea Partiers are consciously racist. The evidence speaks for itself. In the report, you'll find a plethora of examples of racist vitriol on the part of Tea Party leaders, Incidents where well-known anti-Semites and white supremacists have been given platforms by national Tea Party groups and an analysis of the attempts by white nationalist organizations to find new recruits in Tea Party ranks. I won't spare you all the details, but I'll give you just a few examples. One of those is a gentleman by the name of Rowan Garcia Quintana. He's a South Carolina GOP operative who's, pushed, who's been actively involved in Tea Party activities throughout South Carolina. What he doesn't disclose on his bio is he's also a national board member of the Council of Conservative Citizens, the literal reincarnation of the old white citizens councils, the group that Thurgood Marshall used to refer to as the Uptown Klan. And in fact, Council of Conservative Citizens activists now are active in the states of Florida, South Carolina, and Mississippi, running tea parties and participating in local tea party events. There are many of these examples which we could go through, but I encourage you to read the report to take a look at them. Now, these doubts and denials about President Obama's Americanness have been coupled with an often growing level of nativist activity and sentiment from both the grassroots and leadership of Tea Party factions. In 2007, at the height of anti-immigrant organizing, there was a 600% increase in anti-immigrant activity, growing from 135 different local, state, uh, local and state level anti-immigrant organizations to more than 400. By 2010, many of those organizations had dis di virtually disappeared, and we asked ourselves, where had they gone? The answer we found out is they moved themselves right into the Tea Parties changed their names, but became quite active inside the Tea Parties. At a policy level, they've worked not only to impede progress on comprehensive immigration reform and breathe new life into H.R. 1868, the so-called Birthright Citizenship Act of 2009. This bill would end birthright citizenship in the United States for American-born children of parents without papers. It would present a direct constitutional challenge to the 14th Amendment passed after the Civil War to guarantee the rights of newly freed slaves and their children. It is here at the conjunction of nativism, opposition to birthright citizenship, and the denigration of President Obama, and the fear of a new majority in American life, that the unstated racism embedded within the Tea Party becomes vocal and unmistakable. Now the data we present here uh, in Tea Party nationalism is just the beginning. To advance the understanding of the Tea Parties, that data we've collected about the Tea Parties, we're more than willing to share with scholars and journalists and others who have questions about the Tea Party and the trajectory in which they're taking. Thank you very much.